Hello, troubadours and troublemakers. My name is TBS Guy, and about a week back, uh, I put out a general call for questions, which I figured I could then answer in a Q and A video. You all responded rather beautifully, so I'm just gonna go through the top questions which you guys upvoted in the comments and try and respond to as many as I can reasonably get to. Lua.exa asks. Who do you mean in League of Legends? Have you ever tried to design a champion to fit into it? Have you considered doing your old story content? What do you do League of Legends? What's your favorite game? And if it's League, well, then what else? Now, I didn't specifically say in my video that you should only ask one question per comment, so this one's fair enough. I'm gonna answer all of them. Um, and next time around, you're just gonna have to be more specific. Who do I mean in League of Legends? I, I don't get to play League of Legends very much uh, these days, partly because of my raging anxiety, which makes it really hard for me to play competitive games. Um, and partly because I just have too much other stuff to do. But when I do play, I am support main, and I tend to play a lot of Braum. I'm not great at him. I'm probably better at Thresh, if I'm honest, but I tend to play a lot of Braum. Have you ever tried to design a champion to fit into it? No. Uh, I mean, I've sort of toyed with ideas in my heads, but I've never actually... In my heads. My head. Just just the one head. My other head is in the shop. It's down for repairs. We're not using it right now. I, I've, I've not tried to actually sit down and design a champion, partly because I'm not a gameplay designer. I would have no idea how to start to design an ability kit that makes any kind of sense. I, I could make a character design and a story design, but mechanics are not really my thing. Have you considered doing your own story content? Yes, I actually have a couple of webcomics that are theoretically running right now, but again, much like with League of Legends, I haven't had a lot of time to update them, so they're sort of, they're very infrequent. Occasionally they get new content, but I, I do do my own stuff, and there's going to be links to that down in the description. What drew you to League of Legends? Well, back in Season 1 was the first time I played, I think, and that was a friend who invited me to play alongside him because he had just discovered this cool new game, League of Legends, and I was like, I, I had no familiarity with Dota, really, uh, for, even though I played a lot of Warcraft 3, so I just I just played it for a while, and then I got bored of it. I think I got to level 15 back in the day, and then I, then I didn't bother anymore. Um, but then I heard about the Season 2 League of Legends World Championships, and that got me hooked. Like, I, I watched that entire stream, even throughout the massive, enormous, just endless pauses that were happening there, and Silver Scrapes got carved into my brain, but that's... that The esports side is what got me into League of Legends, and from there, then I started developing an interest in the characters and the story and stuff. What's your favorite game, and if it's League, then what else? Well... I, it's certainly not League of Legends. <laughs> Thank you, uh, it's, it's a good game, I like it, I enjoy the story and characters, but it's not... My favorite game, my favorite game of all time probably is Journey by that game company, because I don't think I've ever had a more powerfully emotional reaction to a video game than playing through that game, meeting up with someone, another player in the first area, and then just us, the two of us, completing that journey together throughout the whole game, never being able to communicate except with, you know, body language, as it were, and, and those little trips. Like, that, as an emotional experience, nothing beats Journey for me, ever. King Holden asks, What are your top arbitrary number, but let's say three, or however many you feel like saying, favorite character designs from any piece of media? The trouble with that question is that I, in, in my mental rankings of character designs, I can't really compare things that broadly. In the sense of, a character design that makes perfect sense and is really, really good in Call of Duty doesn't fit into My Little Pony, or Transformers, or G.I. Joe, or, like, it, the field of character design and the various attributes and things that character designs need to accomplish vary so strongly depending on context and, and where they originate that it's really impossible to say anything so general as to say, what are my favorite three from any piece of media? But what I can do is I can give you three character designs that I really like and talk a little bit about the reasons why I like them. And the first one is Saitama from One Punch Man, because he does something which I always adore in character designs. He does many things at once. On the one hand, Saitama's visual design is an explicit parody of superheroes. I, he's just this weird lame dude in a yellow jumpsuit with some ugly rubber gloves and this ridiculous bright white cape who looks like a complete tool, except when the artist needs him to look like a badass, the costume accommodates that as well. If you change the context in which he's presented, all of a sudden his costume actually looks pretty fucking hardcore. 
and he looks really, really cool. And the simplicity of his design allows the story to do some really complicated stuff with his character, which I think is really, really cool. I love it when character designs are multifunctional like that. Another character design I like is Sher Khan from Disney's The Jungle Book. Now, this guy, if I remember correctly, was designed by Milt Kahl, who is probably my favorite animator of all time. I know Milt Kahl animated him. I, I don't remember if he actually did the character design for him, but Sher Khan as a character design is... When you see him in motion, when you see what Milt Kahl can do with that character design, it's so good because, again, it's about the ability to convey a subtlety of performance. And you don't get a lot of screen time with Shere Khan in The Jungle Book, but what you get because of the strength of his character design, that, that big, giant, aristocratic, kind of proud, eternally smiling jaw, and, you know, the big nose and the, that very sharp face and that constant mutation of his facial features and those and the shiny little eyes gives you this impression of him as this kind of dignified self-absorbed kind of arrogant but also dangerous creature which is what he is in the story and he's not a very well explored character in the jungle book at all but how much that's done to build what kind of character he is just with the character design is just it's just gorgeous. I freaking love Milt Kahl's work on that character. A third character I really, really like is Mickey Mouse, but specifically Mickey Mouse from the recent series of animation shorts that Disney have been putting out on YouTube, because this Mickey Mouse, again, he's an extremely simple and iconic design, and that's that's always been why he was Disney's mascot, their, their icon, because he is this, he is the mouse, he is the icon of Disney, and for that reason, he has often been sacrosanct. He's been kind of sacred. They haven't really been able to distort him. They haven't really been able to, you know, break him apart or make his model ugly or make him unappealing. But what they're doing in these new Disney shorts is they're redefining what his character design means for, away from just being the family-friendly, ha-ha, guys, let's all be friends and get along, family mascot into something that is much closer to, first of all, his original incarnation, but also something that's much more interesting. He's a trickster character. He's, he's a, he's a put-upon every man, but also a trickster who can you know, be a dick with the best of them. He, he has this fantastically versatile design where the simplicity of being essentially three circles, they use that really, really efficiently to be able to really super highly over-express all of his movements and all of his characters. And I, I freaking love that. It's just, it's so good. Atrian Gaming asks, what people would you like to do collapse with? Would you enjoy working with the fans as well? What's your op opinion on Kled's taco obsession? Again, multiple questions in one thing, but nonetheless, let's get into it. What people would like to do collaborations with? I, anyone who wants to collaborate? I'm so alone. Just please come say hi. Would you enjoy working with the fans as well? I've been thinking about something like that. Like if, if I set out a theme and you design some characters on it and I try and get feedback on it, but I don't want it to be a thing where I'm asking you guys to do work for me for free because I'm really very against that as a freelancer. That So I'm trying to figure out a way maybe I can, I can collaborate with you guys and, and make a video out of that, but that's in the future. That's not now. What's my opinion on Klet's Taco Obsession? It's just a funny detail on a funny character. I don't think it means that much. I can is beam, not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly, asks, how did you get into animation and design? Like, what drew you in about the subject and when did you start studying it? I, the first time I watched a Disney movie, I think, is when I got interested in animation, even if I didn't really know that that was, was, was happening at the, that time. But the thing that got me into drawing and got me thinking critically about art was Dragon Ball, actually. When I was about 13, that, got, that, that series got published in Denmark, where I lived for the first time, and I picked it up and I got completely and utterly obsessed with it. And I wanted to learn to draw like that, so I picked up these shitty how-to-draw manga books... Um, and they kind of got me started, and from there on, I, I, I'm pretty much self-taught. Like, I've, I've never had a lot of lessons in my life. I've, I've attended a few classes, life drawing classes, is something you should absolutely do if you want to learn how to draw. Mostly I'm self-taught, mostly I've, I've studied on my own. Um, and that's, that's, that's how I got into it. When did I start studying it? It happened organically. Bailey Lee asks, What did your parents slash guardians think of you moving into the creative field of careers? My family has always been almost absurdly supportive um, of, of me being creative. Like, my mother will not stop hounding me to start writing that book I keep talking about writing, and she's very right to. In fact, it's uh, throughout my life, it's kind of always been me who's been pushing back and being like, no, no, I need to go to school first. I need to get a degree. I need to be responsible. <laughs> I, I, I've always been the guy who kind of was reluctant to 
get too creative because I felt like I should do some sensible air quotes stuff first. But I honestly, I should have just listened to my parents sooner. <laughs> Ritan de Fluheston, I again, no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly, asks... This is a pretty random question, but do you watch anime, and if so, what is your favorite anime? Yeah, I do watch anime. I've got some videos on my channel about that, actually. And my favorite anime of all time, again, much like video, like, like much like favorite video game, that's a really hard question to answer. I, but one of the ones I liked the most recently uh, was Kill la Kill. I think that was a surprisingly interesting anime. I think um, Pantheon Stalking is, is, is a particular favorite of mine because it's just so wonderfully stylized and it's so fantastically dirty. Captain Marvelous asks, and Captain Marvelous, I believe, is, is uh, the same person who moderates my Discord channel. Hi, Captain. How do you feel about being known as a primarily League-centric channel, centric channel and working with Riot so closely? Well, I don't know how closely I work with Riot. Like, I've done some freelance work for them. I've done some animation work for them, but I'm not... I, I talk to them. I know a few of them. And I'm fine with being known as primarily a League channel. I mean, I do other stuff, and uh, over time... Hopefully I'll be known for more than just League of Legends stuff, but I'm, I'm completely fine with it. Sonic Blaster 33 asks, What is your favorite champion design slash lore in League of Legends? I know you made a video on what you thought was the best, but I don't think you talked about your favorite. That's actually a good distinction. Just because something is the best, that doesn't mean it has to be a favorite in any given category. And indeed, for me, my favorite lore is still Ramus because it is so... It, it is so unique and could only ever work with that character, and, and I think that deserves a lot of points. But my favorite character design in League of Legends, not necessarily the best, but my favorite is Ilawi. Because she's big, she's tough, she's cool, she's interesting, and she doesn't take shit from anybody. And within the context of League of Legends, she is tremendously and very importantly unique. Drunken Muppet asks, know any good jokes? Yeah, plenty. Hidden Lights asks, accent, what is it? Well, an accent is a mode of expressing yourself within a particular language that tends to be tied to social groupings. That is to say, if you live in a particular area, if you're a member of a certain social group, then you might develop a particular accent. And whichever accents you tend to be exposed to uh, during your developmental phases will be the ones that you adopt in your own pronunciations throughout your life. It's generally agreed upon by linguists that if you are not exposed to a certain accent before six months of age, then you're going to have trouble adopting that accent in the future. Although, of course, as an adult, you can always teach yourself to speak with whatever accent you like. Um, actors do this all the time. My accent in particular is a little bit all over the place. Most of the time I have this accent, which people have described variously as... I've been mistaken for being a person from London. Um, I've been mistaken for being, for being an American. I've been mistaken for being a Canadian. And all kinds of different things, but I am in fact Danish. And if you, if I want to, I can speak with more of a Danish accent. Um, if you know Defisu from the European LCS, I speak with a somewhat different Danish accent than he does. Uh, although certainly if, if we were talking Danish accent to each other, then you would probably recognize that we were from the same country. Carl Angelo Ganya, I think that's how that's supposed to be pronounced, asks, Who are some notable artists or people who have influenced you? Or who you find have interesting works? Well, again, there's way too long of a list to even begin to try and summarize here, but the two cartoonists or artists who have most influenced me directly are probably Akira Toriyama, especially with his work on Dragon Ball, which, which is the foundation of how I think about constructing action scenes and dynamic motion today. That, that very much comes from him. And Kino Don Rosa, um, who you might not know if you are American, which is weird because he is an American comic artist, but he's someone who did a lot of work in Europe, specifically for um, some European publishers of Disney comics, drawing comics about uh, Scrooge McDuck, Donald Duck, and the general Duck family around Duckburg. Essentially, there's a lot of the same characters that you would have seen in um, DuckTales back in the day, but he, he did comics about them. And they are absolutely spectacular. They, they are some of my favorite comics of all time. And if you can get a hold of his magnum opus, like his, his greatest work, which is The Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck, and if you can get a hold of an uncensored version, because they were censored, especially in America, when it comes to portraying characters with guns and such, then you should do yourself a huge favor and get them. Because they are... He's not only a ferociously, technically talented artist, he's fantastically good at cartooning. He does amazing expressions, amazing action sequences, fantastic backgrounds, and his writing is just, 
it sparked my interest in history because so many of his stories are grounded in, in, in a wonderfully quirky understanding of real historical events. He will often have his duck family go off on adventures out in the wild world looking for treasure in, in real-life historical locations based on real-life historical fact, although twisted, of course, to fit a duck featuring universe. And it's just, I, I cannot recommend the work of Kino Don Rosa enough. Igugugu asks... Is your beard as glorious as your avatar suggests? No, <laughs> probably not. I, uh, I don't think my beard is especially glorious. It does. It. I don't really have a particularly full beard. So if I let it grow for too long, I get a kind of Abraham Lincoln uh, chin beard, which is absolutely not flattering. But but no, my, my avatar stylization, I don't look quite that nice in real life. Ryan Smith asks, what would your perfect champion design be like? Uh, you can't make a perfect champion, so... I, I don't, I don't know. I can't even imagine, because you can't. Everything has flaws, everything. Riku Teto asks, is the character you use a representation of you? Also, has that character had other designs? Uh, yeah, the character I use is a representation of me, and it, yeah, he's had other designs as I got better at drawing representations of myself, and as I changed in appearance over the years, but mostly, no, it's always just been kind of a simple cartoonish version of myself. Boop asks, what's the best advice for digital artists or artists in general? Well, the best advice to give to any artist is something you've already heard a million times before, and that's practice. Because no matter what other advice you get, no matter what it is, it, none of it matters if you don't put it into practice. If you don't put in the hours, if you don't put in the work, then there will be no improvement no matter what. So the theoretically, that's the best advice. The second best advice would be to find a community of artists who you like, um, who you can communicate with, who you can not necessarily be friends with, but who can be your peers, and who can give you feedback, and you can give them feedback, and you can help each other learn and grow. Because there's nothing more discouraging than being a person alone in their art. That's, that's, that's really, really hard. Try and find a community, if you can. Boop also asks, do you find the designs of a game or a series or whatever more important than the gameplay in some cases? Yeah, that's, I'm absolutely guilty of that. For me, if a game or a series or a video or whatever doesn't really look appealing, doesn't look interesting on some level, then I am very unlikely to be interested in it. I really, there's a lot of good entertainment out there, and usually it's possible to find one that's both, both visually and in terms of the writing and the mechanics, good. And I'm not going to waste time on something that plays nice but looks awful. Modrak asks, Are you prepared to hit 100k sub? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, no. Satrachi asks, In your opinion, what are character design tropes and cliches that you are absolutely tired of? What's an idea you feel isn't explored enough in character design? I think the number one character design trope that I am kind of bored with, that I, I feel like I've seen enough of for a while, is beauty. Because beauty is, is the default state of a hell of a lot of character design, especially in video games. It's if you want to have a character be appealing, you make them gorgeous in some way. You make them beautiful, you make them attractive somehow. Not necessarily just sexually, but just you, you make them appealing from a visual perspective in order to make them appealing as a character. And that's... I completely understand why that's the default, but it's also the default so much that I get bored of it. And consequently, an idea I feel that isn't explored enough is unappealing character designs. A character designs that just aren't nice, that just aren't attractive all on their own. How do you explore that? How do you make that interesting? How do you make people gravitate towards it? How do you make people want to engage with a character who is visually, from a visual standpoint, not designed to be appealing? That's, that's very interesting to me, and it's something I wish that more video games, more things, especially just more media, would engage with. Colin Fang asks, Who do you ship in the League of Legends universe based on their lore? Leona and Diana are gay for each other, and I'm not going to let anyone tell me that they're not gay for each other, because they're gay for each other. All right, I think that was most of the upvoted questions. Thank you very much to everybody who left questions on that video, and thank you so much to the people who went into the comments and upvoted questions that they wanted to see answers to. Uh, this was fun. I might do that again in the future sometime, so look out for that. And uh, if you are so inclined, you can head on over to Patreon, where you can support this channel and help me do stuff like make rent and have 
food and things. But if you can't or you're not inclined to do so, that's completely fine. Uh, if you want to subscribe, that's an option. If you want to like, that is an option. And if you want to dislike, well, then you must answer me these questions three. What is your quest? What is your favorite color? And what is the average airspeed of an unladen swallow? Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.